right, today in geometry, we're going to look at part two of section 2.6, more segment and some angle proofs. Let's recall some properties, postulates, definitions that we talked about last week. So first is the vertical angle theorem. If two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. Remember that we said we could abbreviate that as VAT, V-A-T. Then the linear pair postulate. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. We abbreviated that LPP. The right angle definition, an angle is a right angle if and only if it measures 90 degrees. And the right angle congruence theorem, if two or more angles are right, then they are congruent. So again, we're going to review the properties. So let's name the property being demonstrated. Number one, if measure of angle A equals 40 degrees, then 40 degrees equals the measure of angle A. So I have the exact same thing on both sides. They've just been swapped. So this is the symmetric property of equality. So this is symmetric property of equality. Number two, if 2x plus 5 equals 8, then 2x equals 3. So we subtracted 5 from both sides. So this is the subtraction property of equality. Number three, AB equals AB. I have the exact same thing on both sides. Nothing has changed. This is reflexive property of equality. Number four, if MN equals RS, then RS equals MN. So again, the only thing that changed was the order. So symmetric property of equality. Number five, angle RST is congruent to angle TSR. And notice that the R and the T traded places. So this is symmetric property of congruence because we had a congruent symbol instead of equal symbol. If B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So what are we doing? We're adding two small parts to get the big part. And what are we adding? Segments. So this is the segment addition postulate. Stop. If AB equals MN, then the segment AB is congruent to segment MN. We changed from equals to congruence. Definition of congruence. And number eight, if segment AB is congruent to segment MN and MN is congruent to XY, then segment AB is congruent to segment XY. This is our transitive property of congruence. It's like our law of syllogism chain rule. All right, so let's look at some more proofs. So we're going to complete the following proofs. To give me this picture, given AC equals BD, prove that AB is equal to CD. So let's make our statements and our reasons. We always start out with what they give me. So AC equals BD. Good. I look at my picture, and I need to get AB and CD into my proof. I have AC that they give me. So what could I do with AC? I notice I have this B in here. So I could say that if I took AB and I added BC to that, I would get the whole thing. And that's going to get me AB into my proof. So let's put that in. AB plus BC equals AC. How do I know that? If I add the two small segments together, I get the great big segment. That's segment addition postulate. So now I've got the AB part into my proof. So now I'm going to do the same thing with to get CD in. So if I look at B to D, again, if I take BC and I add CD to it, I get BD. So BC plus CD equals BD, again, that is the segment addition postulate. So now I have the very first equation. It tells me AC equals BD. But here, this is what AC is equal to, AB plus BC. So if I were to replace all of that with AC, I would get my AB into my problem. So I'm going to rewrite equation number one, the statement that they gave me, number one. But I'm going to replace the AC with AB plus BC. And that is equal to BD. I'm going to replace something, that's substitution. Remember, I can use substitution if I have equal signs. So now, 
this BD, okay? And I'm doing this in two steps. I could have done all in one, but I'm choosing to do it in two steps so that you can see what we're doing. So BD, I know is really BC plus CD. So I'm going to replace that with BC plus CD. Again, substitution. If I were to subtract BC from both sides, it goes away, and I would be left with AB equals CD. How did I get rid of it? I subtract it. So subtraction property of equality. And now notice I have exactly what they asked me to prove, AB equals CD. All right, let's look at one with angles. So given the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2, so this has one tick mark, this has one tick mark. Measure of angle 3, two tick marks, is equal to measure of angle 4, two tick marks. Prove angle ABC, the great big angle over here, is equal to the measure of angle DEF, the great big one over there. All right. So statements and reasons. Again, I'm going to start out with what they give me. Measure angle 1 equals measure angle 2. Measure angle 3 equals measure angle 4. And these are both given. Because that's what they gave to me. Okay, I need to get ABC and DEF into my proof. So if I come over here and I look at ABC, what do I what can I say about it right now? Angle one plus angle three adds together to give me that. So I'm gonna say measure angle one plus measure angle three equals measure angle ABC. Now I have ABC into my proof. What property or postulate tells me I can add the two small angles together and equal the big one? Angle addition postulate. I'm going to do the same thing with the other picture to get DEF in my picture, in my proof. Measure angle 2 plus measure angle 4 equals the measure of angle DEF. And again, that is the angle addition postulate. So now, again, okay, I need to get rid of all the one, two, three, fours, right? Just to get A, B, C, and D, E, F. Right now, I have measure of angle one plus measure of angle three equals A, B, C. But what do I know that measure of angle three is? I know that it's angle four. Or I could say, or sorry, um, I could replace angle one with angle two. So I'm just going to rewrite this equation right here, and in place of Angle 1, I'm going to put angle 2 in there. Measure angle 2 plus measure angle 3 equals measure angle ABC. I did substitution. I'm going to now go down here to this fourth one that I wrote down. I'm going to replace angle 4 with angle 3 because they told me that they were the same. So I'm going to rewrite that, measure angle 2 plus measure instead of angle 4, I'm going to call it angle 3 equals measure angle DEF. And again, this is a substitution. Now, I'm going to rewrite measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this. I really know that that's really the measure of angle ABC. It's equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3, measure angle DEF. So I took this equation, oh, sorry, I took this equation in number 6, and I replaced Measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 with measure of angle ABC. Again, substitution. And I have proven exactly what they asked me to prove so that I know that I'm done. All right, let's go to the back. Given angle 2 is congruent to angle 5, so 2 and 5 I know are the same. Angle 4 is congruent to angle 5, so that's the same. Measure of angle 2, so this is 2x plus 100. Measure of angle 4 is 10x plus 20. Prove that x is equal to 10 degrees. Okay. So they gave me the statements. We're going to write down the reasons. So angle 2 congruent to angle 5, 
given. They gave me that, right? Angle 4 congruent to angle 5, also given. Angle 5 congruent to angle 4, what did they do? They traded places with it, so that's the symmetric property of congruence. Angle 2 congruent to angle 4, so then they went the very first, the very last, and that was our transitive property of congruence. Measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 4, so they took this and they replaced that with an equals, so that's the definition of congruence. Then they said measure of angle 2 equals 2x plus 100, measure of angle 4 equals 10x plus 20. Remember, they gave us that stuff as well. We didn't need it yet, so now we put it in. So given 2x plus 100, so they took measure of angle 2, so they replaced this with 2x plus 100, equals they replaced this with 10x plus 20, so they substituted. And remember that we can only use substitution with equality, so that's why they changed from congruence to equality. So then they went, they moved the 2x over. They did that by subtracting. So that's subtraction property of equality. And they subtracted 20 over. So again, subtraction property of equality. They divided by 8. So division property of equality. And finally, they flipped it so that it would look exactly like they asked, x equals 10, so that was the symmetric property of equal. All right, let's do another one of those. So given angle A is congruent to angle B, so this and this are the same. Angle C is congruent to angle B, measure of angle A is 60 degrees, prove angle C is 60 degrees. So statement number one, angle A congruent to angle B, given. Angle C congruent to angle B, given. They traded places with the B and the C, symmetric. Property of congruence. And they said now angle A congruent to angle C, very first to the very last. That's the transitive property of congruence. Then they went from congruent to equal, so that is definition of congruence. And they said the measure of angle A is equal to 60 degrees. Remember, they gave us that as well, so now we're going to use that. So then they took this equation. They substituted measure of angle A with 60, so substitution. And then they traded places. They flopped the measure of angle C in a 60 degrees, so that was symmetric. Property of equality. So those are a few more examples of some angle and segment proofs. So hopefully this will help some more with our um, proofs that we are working on for homework.